Hey! Anyway, two words. Jean Nassif. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking fucked everyone up the ass. <laughs> I, I don't know him personally. Come on, I know I know a lot of old school builders and everything because I've always been around that industry. And, oh fuck, especially the days I worked with fucking Galani. Well, not that we work with each other much, but I did work with him and he taught me a thing or two. Oh my god. So, no, but besides Galani, I, I've known heaps of other people, especially from my grandfather, and yeah, and I just, I, I, for some reason, I wanted to fuck around a lot as a teenager, which I shouldn't have done. I realise that now. It wasn't long. That's not long ago, but I realise why you can't fuck around with trades and you know, be a not maniac, but yeah, yeah be a maniac. But I, I don't know. I don't know Jean Nassif. And my antics on the building industry, which are very strict and stern, are contrary to me being cheeky to when I was younger, <laughs> which I sh again shouldn't have been, and really, a re that attitude is really a reflection of my grandfather's very, wow, military-like trades approach. Everything's fucking <laughs> spot on. Nothing's off a tad. Um, you know, and I think he did do his uh, trade back in Malta when he was 13, 14. Uh, I think he even started when he was 11. 11 ish, 12, all the way to when he was 15, 16, before he went to the military. I think he did his trade with an Englishman. I could be wrong. I don't think it was a Maltese, like a Maltese bloke as in surname. I think it was an, I think my grandfather did his trade with a uh, typical English bloke. I could be wrong about that. Because he did tell me that that was the first time he ever drove a car, or jumped on the back of a car, got a lift from down at the bottom of Humroon where they lived, and they just went off to the docks or something. He got his first job, and yeah, all of a sudden he was a fucking shop joiner by the time it was 15, 16. And, it's, and he was in the army for five years. So back then you left school when you were in year five, year six, if you didn't go on. Whereas his brothers went on and became highly accomplished in his brother, sorry, in, in the Air Force. And, you know, did the equivalent of the HSC and did the university thing and all that. But my grandfather just didn't give a fuck. <laughs> it was very sim My grandfather and I are very similar. He just wanted to get straight down to the nuts and bolts and work. And he got his first job when he was 11 or 12, something like that. And, yeah. But that mentality, that very, you know, straight to work, just spot on. Everything's in its place. Everything's proper. That's... You know, it's his work ethic, and it's rubbed off on me. And it most certainly did not uh, appear that way as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> I was fucking bad. But, you know, that's contrary. What I'm saying is contrary to that. So it, all my antics in the, on the building industry have always been uh, the way, in line with the way building trades and the building environment should be. So going back full circle, this John Nassif, do I think he's a devil? Do I think it's all his fault? Nah. Nah. I mean, he could be a shifty bloke. I don't know. I, they're all saying he's fraud. He's a fraud star and he's wanted by ICAC and all this bullshit. And he's gone off to Zgarta in Lebanon to hide in some cave or hide in some place where the donkey fetches his news. That's what he said. You know, it... it do I think that he's un-Australian or he's a wanker or all this sort of stuff? There could be some slight undertones, but at the end of the day, he took advantage of a completely use of a completely fucked up industry. You know, this was the cream of the crop. This was the best building industry in the world. This had high standards. My grandfather came here proud to take his upbringing and make it happen here and as did many that were like him so this is my story and my grandfather but a lot of it i know especially the italians a lot of uh italian australians people i grew up with went to school with their grandfathers and their fathers are equally the same if not more stern jesus christ if the, you fucking make a little mistake fucking bang oh they're ruthless but that was the high standard they set and the Australian building industry actually thrived because of that. The bar went higher. 
and all of a sudden, a profit took over. Uh, it's profit went wild. And cutting corners went wild. Yeah, it's interesting because it's a similar story to the police force. All the best techniques in the world are there. We're a world, we're a first world country. We're we've got the best building industry in the world, the best building code, but we're not using it properly. We're not applying it as we so we're supposed to. So, did this John Nassif? Is he some sort of building heretic? Is he uh, the worst uh, developer to have ever roamed this country? I think he's just a product of what's been going on. You know, his business between Ray Hadley, especially. Oh my God, Ray Hadley's always in the fucking middle of some shitstorm, isn't he? He was in the middle of the shitstorm with me. Now he's in the middle of the shitstorm with John Nassif. It's always if everybody blame whoever's against Ray Hadley. It's never Ray Hadley's fault. Oh my God. Anyway, I'm not going to go there. I couldn't give a flying fuck about him. Uh, his Parramatta Reels are suffering badly, and that's enough for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like an asshole, am I? Don't you love this fringe? I don't. I could fucking part it and make it nice and stuff, but I fucking like that look. It's like a Kramer. Or Kramer. You know, he walks in. Hey. Anyway. No, this is John Nassif. I just pissed myself laughing just thinking of the whole predicament. The, the entirety just comes in my mind. He's in Lebanon, hiding in some fucking cave or some countryside or whatever it is. Donkeys are fetching him news. And meanwhile, he's got this crumbling building empire in New South Wales worth almost a billion dollars in, in debt. It just it, it doesn't paint who he is. It paints who our, who our state has become. All the missed priorities. Now, did Chris Minns create all this? Fuck no. He just inherited a shitstorm. It's not Chris's fault. It's not the Premier's fault. He inherited a police force that are wasting New South Wales resources more than this fucking uh, Muppet. So it's easy to deflect responsibility. It's easy to go, oh, look, let's all point at fucking John Nassif. He's a fucking cunt. And he might be. I mean, he's a dead big time. And he's, he has fucked off. But... Look, what I'm saying is it's it's very convenient to just blame him and not the environment to which he's operating in. He's a pro- what I'm saying is he's a product of his environment, so he's not fully culpable. You know, he's been he's been somewhat groomed into that position, propped up, successful. He comes with the territory. He has a, He's not a. He doesn't seem to be a self-made billionaire or millionaire. He's just thrived in a shit environment. He's a product of his environment. Um. Crumbling towers seem to be the norm. We saw it the other year. We're seeing it again with him. We're seeing it at left, right, and centre. And this is our building industry going haywire. Um, and that needs rectification. It needs serious rectification. And it needs rectification from the fucking... Not just... Not from the developers. It needs rectification from the builders. From the architects. If you're not going to build to this standard, get the fuck out of my face. You, know, you and your developer money. That's, that's the high standard... True builders have to have. Do you understand? True builders. True architects. Not this fucking cut corner shit. You know, tell the fucking developer to shove his money up his fucking cunt and fuck off somewhere else where he can build fucking toy toy castles. This is Australia. This is where our fathers came and fucking built proper shit. You know, not fucking shit fucking crumbling apart. Fuck me dead. I can go out to the fucking forest now and build your Buckingham Palace that won't fall apart because my grandfather bred the fear of fucking shop fit joinery into me. I know exactly what a proper job looks like and I also know how to fuck around. <laughs> That's not the good part. That's, you don't do that. Uh, but this, it's, it's our building industry, not John Nassif. Okay? He's not the problem. Our building industry is. And what's interesting is, it's similar to the police force, it's not the, it, not, we don't need a reformation or anything. It, it's all there. It just needs to be practiced. So nothing, nothing completely uh, out of the ordinary needs to happen. Nothing revolutionary. No serious changes need to be made. Th- things just need to be done properly. It, it's that simple. It can't be fucking said any more simple. So you make what you want of that. And yeah, John Nassif. Product is a product of his environment. He, he just makes me laugh. I, I, I wouldn't even bother with him. Oh, obviously, the creditors have to, but... Or debtors, whoever the fuck they are. Is it debtor? Creditor? Whatever you call them in the 
accounting fucking story, the accounting side of things. And yeah, what a what a convenient affliction too. New South Wales police are spending billions of dollars a year on garbage, uh, garbage things, complete garbage, complete shit, spitting from their mouth left, right, and centre. They've they've wasted. What I'm saying is, it's not just the one off. It's the last ten or so years. Every year they never fail to waste about two or three billion dollars, or maybe a bit less. They waste billions. It, it goes into the billions, and it's just garbage investigations, most of the work. Uh, and when that all comes together, it's somewhere between ten and twenty billion dollars. That's a lot of money. That's a bit more than five hundred million dollars from John Nasif and his crumbling empire. And at least even then, there's still going to be a fire sale. A lot of it can be recuperated. It's not dead money. Whereas with the police and their dodgy fucking ways in this state, they're the ones with a serious problem. So it's a convenient deflection. Chris Minns should be focusing on waste at government level. He's certainly not a problem. He's a good premier, but he should be focusing on waste at the government level, especially cops. They're a bunch of fucking idiots. He should be really ripping into them. Um, and he should ensure that the problem is fixed at the source, not by chasing, the, in terms of the building industry, going away from the cops, you know, me and my crusade against them. Uh, the building industry, you're not going to fix it by chasing some bloke in Lebanon in the countryside. Uh, you can do that, but... Obviously, as I said, those people who are owed money have to, but in reality... <laughs> okay, it's funny shit. But uh, <laughs> that's not the source of the problem. What they need to fix, what they need to fix every day of the week is the standard or the standard of work in the building industry. No cut corners. You cut a corner, say bye-bye to your licence. Here's a fucking hundred thousand dollar fine. How do you like that? You want to fuck around with our with our building industry? This is what you get. It's that simple, you know. And the and the cowboys that bring guns to building site and you know intimidate other people. Fuck me, dead. Just put the SAS on the fucking building site to build the fuck out of them. Do something. Put me on there. Put me in this fucking building site. If I start seeing cunts carrying around guns on a building site so they can cut corners, I will throw them off the building. Fuck me, they made no mistake. 